Hello, ladies and gentlemen, this is Eddie Marcus again, spokesman and advocate of basic human rights for all people. Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. I advocate for basic human rights for everybody. What does that mean, basic human rights? Well, we are humans. And we did not make ourselves initially. We were made by another entity. And we were put here. And being put here, we were put on an earth. We were put on a situation where everything that is necessary for a human being survival is already in the earth, on the earth, above the earth, seen or unseen. All the resources necessary to do anything for the preservation of human beings has already been established before human beings. So human beings own nothing. It's like your puppy, your dog. You bring him home, that, what does that dog own? The dog owns nothing but what you give to the dog. If you got two dogs, you give two bowls. If you got three dogs, you use three bowls. You don't take three dogs and buy one bowl for all of them to eat out of that's small so they start fighting over who got the food. No, you bring three dogs home because you can afford three dogs. Well, what I'm saying in this process is that the power that foresaw we human beings being on this earth wanted to make sure that not a single one of us would be denied those essentials for survival. Food, clothing, shelter, education, health care, and guaranteed to us that this could be done because every last one of us require these things. And every last one of us required to participate in the production thereof. Now we could take ourselves as individuals and go out and take care of our food, our clothing, our shelter, our education, and our health care. And people say, that's what we do with a job. Well, that's the trick. That's the trick, ladies and gentlemen. Because if you were taking care of building your house, creating your food, fixing your clothes, teaching yourself, having all your health care, it would take every piece of energy that you got. But working in cooperation, collectively. You can work on one of these things, whatever is your basic desire, whatever your gift is that's already been instilled in you or been set up through a process that you can determine later what it is that you truly want to do. But it's one of these things. And by indulging yourself directly in what your gift is in this creative process, it automatically entitles you, indirectly, to what everybody else is creating and doing. What everybody is creating and doing is indirect benefit for everybody else. All they do is engage their individual gift and that entitles them indirectly for everything that everybody is doing. With that, you get peace, you get prosperity, you get joy. You don't get no poverty, you don't get crime, you don't get violence, you don't get terrorism, and you don't get war. So when you're living in a situation where all of these things occur, according to my mission, we call that hell. We call it hell when three American people can own as much wealth and earn as much money as, I mean, three people, as 42% of 300 million. 42% 40, of 300 million people. You know, of, uh, and you got three people in the United States that got that much money. What does that say about this country? It says that this country is on a path that is headed for destruction. But the question might be asked, what is happening in the USA right now? And if you were told the truth, you must understand that what is happening is justice. Justice. Donald Trump and all this hell we're going through right now is what we call justice. Nobody wants it, but it is justice. It is the fruit of a racist nation. Let me say it again. What's going on in America right now is the fruit 
of a racist nation. We've tried to play like we weren't, but we are a racist nation, and this is the fruit thereof. So, so racist, in fact, that when Obama, a black man, finally walked into that White House, immediately, racism began its strategizing. Racism began its strategizing to do all they could to defeat anything he set out to do. Remember the Tea Party, all those guys? Everything Obama set out to do. They want to make sure he didn't accomplish a thing. Why? Because he was black. And Donald Trump saw that. Donald Trump was already like that. He saw that the American people were like that. And so he decided to begin campaigning. And he began his campaign on Barack Obama not being a citizen. So when he started that, all the racist people looked at that. They said, okay, when Trump, when Obama was over, all they needed, they wanted a racist person. Not just a white man, because you had a lot of choices of white men. They didn't want those white men. They wanted a racist white man to take forward their agenda and show these black people and show all those niggas what was really important, white people. Well, they got that. They rewarded him by making him president. And that was to take down everything that Barack Obama had did, also to take down the United States of America. So that this great racist nation that wants to isolate itself behind a wall, a nation of white racists stuck in time, But you know what? As you watch what is going on, you might think that uh, to fix this, it won't be happening from a white person. Now, we have to realize that had white people participated, if had white people hadn't been compassionate enough, loving enough, caring enough about the democracy, about America, there's no way Barack Obama would have become president. But they cared enough. They just didn't care enough to stick by. Well, they stood by him for a while. But at the end, the racist won. They got their man. And as a consequence, you see right now all of the laws that, that used, the United States used to be held up as being the greatest nation on the face of the earth because things were understood, things were normal. You respect decency. Now you allow Lucifer to come in. And Lucifer is taking every department, every government agency, that has been held up by tradition and replacing them with his cohorts. They are replacing them with little demons. And what I call little demons are those who don't give a darn about you, don't give a darn about democracy, don't give a darn about this country, but they care about themselves. And Lucifer has told them, if you care about me, then I'll look after you. Now he's bringing in a private military, Blackwater. You heard about Blackwater back there in, in uh, Iraq. You heard about how they went out killing people. So now he want to set it up. They tell you here, they say they got Russia what well, got something like that going on where Putin can sit around and kill all his political enemies. Now Donald Trump wants to sign up a contract. I heard they just passed it in the law the other day where they can set up a private army. Blackwater's already applied for a contract where they can come around within the United States and kill anybody that Donald Trump don't like. Ladies and gentlemen, I sit there and I look at the Congress, and they sit right there like they are demons themselves. And I sit there and I watch you, the American people. We talk about this here stuff. You're on the streets marching, women, me too, and all this stuff. All of that is wonderful. But what about your freedom? What about your nation? What about your representation? Are you going to sit around and talk this stuff? and complain about this stuff, while you lose everything that this nation has ever represented. 
the thing that made this nation great, the thing that gave you pride, this thing that made other people across the world look at this nation and say, I want to go to America. Now, this devil has come here and want to turn America to pure hell. And you can't do anything about it. And you can't do anything about it. Your God can't even do anything about it. Why? Because your God is so tied up in this business. Your God is so tired of trying to get that same money in your pocket. Your God is so tired of that he got you with big organizations where you want to think that you got something going on so your speaker. See, money is your God. And so when your speaker goes out and he does not challenge the state, you see, God is in opposition to a state that is in opposition to God. God is about peace and prosperity. God is not for war and crime and violence. That comes from somebody else. And if there were representatives of God here, they would be standing for what God stands for. And they would not be sitting in their seats and watching the, the, the YouTube and Facebook talk about all this stuff and all about it complaining. They would get up off their tails. They'd get up off their butts and they'd knock on their neighbor's doors and say, we got to stop this. Our nation is not just on fire with wildfires. Our nation is not just being flooded with tsunamis and storms and snow. Our nation is being destroyed by devils and demons and people who don't give a darn about other people, only themselves, and they're going to bring this nation down, and we're going to be sitting on the couch complaining, sitting at the kitchen table talking about it. Well, you better get your butts off that thing, go out there and stand up like a man. Get your tail. Who kills you? Don't, don't give a damn about who kills you. You better stand up for your children. You better stand up for your children. Because if you don't stand up for your children, they're going to be snatching their teeth out. They're going to be pulling their hands out of the world. Anything you need, they don't have no life at all. You're talking about going to hell. You don't have to go to hell. You're in hell. The point that you need right now is to switch this hell that you're in and say, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. No. Basically, that's what my mission is. My mission is to see that the will of heaven the wheel that says rain represents water. Steam represents water. Ice represents water. All of these represent water. That's harmony. Water ain't fire. So ladies and gentlemen, having said this, I, I want to say this to the church. The mission, you heard that when Jesus came, he said, I have come, I'm not going to go into the whole statement, to set the captives free. Who are the captives? Captives are those who are being oppressed. And who are those oppressed? Those whose dreams are are not coming true. They are the oppressed. Now, ladies and gentlemen, look at me. I'm a black man. You know you don't like black people. Some black people don't like black people. I'm poor. You can see that. You can see it by listening to me talk. Look at my mouth. See how my teeth are messed up. I wish I can go to Clear Choice. But Clear Choice says it. you can have a raggedy mouth if you want them. You come in here, you better bring some payola with you. Bring some God, some green God with you, otherwise you're not going to do that. Well, see, ladies and gentlemen, that is an expression that came over time, up to this point in time, that makes this our way of life. And I don't know if there's anybody else talking about changing it to peace and prosperity. I know I am. And every last one of you who hear this video should like it, should Subscribe to it. Should pass it along to people everywhere you can. They don't have to listen. But help me, if you will, to get the message out to America and to the world. We don't have to be brought down by Trump. We don't have to let Lucifer. We don't have to let the devil beat us. But we got to know that we can win because God is in us. Now. I was in a vehicle this morning. My, one of my preacher friends wanted me to go with him. 
help him get us someplace. And when we got there, he was trying to get the radio on the station to listen to talk. I really wanted to talk to him. But I didn't mind listening to the radio station. But when he put it on was Osteen. Osteen. Joe Osteen. You want me to sit there? I'm sitting here telling you about peace and prosperity and joy for every individual. And Joe Osteen telling you, be cool. Be smooth. Smile. Don't worry about it. Sit back. And let God fight your battle. Yeah, that's what he told the Indians. Sit back and let God fight your battle. That's what he told all those slave people. Sit back and let God fight your battle. That's what he told them whether they were black or Chinese or whatever. Sit back and let God fight your battle. Did they tell you? Sit back and let God fight your battle and do that. Because the day just might be the day that God has planned for you. What he has done, ladies and gentlemen, people don't even think about it, is that he has taken you, telling you about God, and fixed you in Satan's plan. This is Satan's plan for the world. Satan operates off of money. God operates off of love and compassion. Satan operates off of money. Lucifer operates off of money. M-O-N-E-Y. God operates off of love and compassion. Now, these churches, every last one of them, all they're telling you about how God blessed you, gave you a jet, gave you a two or three jets, but you can praise him up in the air while all of these poor people are down here on the ground suffering. While you're up there, oh, Lord, thank you so very much. And your people down here are dying. Inhale. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm telling you this because I'm telling you what you got to do. You got to stand up as individuals first. You got to stand up as individuals. If you stand up as an individual, you'll be surprised how you come together as a group. Don't stand up as no group at first. Stand up as an individual. Make your mind up and be willing to die if you got to. Now, I'm not talking about killing. I don't know too much about that self-defense stuff. It depends on how that threat come upon you. You come up on you and catch you off guard, you might defend yourself. But if you've got so much God in you, you might be glad. Think that that death has come to liberate you from this hell. How you look at it depends on how you develop your relationship with the Almighty. That's up to you. But I'm telling you right now, you hear, you hear me talking? Turn on your Facebook, turn on your YouTube. You're going to hear people complaining about all kinds of things. From sun up to sun down, from sun up to sun down, they're going to be telling you about what's going on in the world. They're going to be telling you this and telling you that and analyze this, analyze that. But let me ask you this. I haven't heard them say one thing. You don't have, forget the government, forget the Senate, forget the Congress, forget the president. They don't work for you. They don't work for you. They work for Satan. Now you got to stand up for yourselves. Now, are they?